under 28 U.S.C. Part, four, part uh, 6, Chapter 161, uh, 2403 B quote in any action suit or proceeding in a court of the United States to which a state to which a state or any agency officer or employee thereof is not a party wherein the constitutionality of any statute of that state affecting the public interest is drawn in question the court shall certify such fact to the Attorney General, the Supreme Court, shall certify such fact to the Attorney General of the state and shall permit the state to intervene for pre presentation of evidence if evidence is otherwise admissible in the case and for argument on the question of constitutionality. You should see the dancing around the Supreme Court and the AG did to get out of answering the simple question I posed to my, on my subpoena. Wow. Next up, are the government officials truly government officials? After you get certified copies of their oath of office and bonds for the local DA, sheriff, and police at the county recorder's office, and I'm going to show you one right here, we can see that this is a, uh, this is a uh, oath of office on file at the county clerk's office for um, a sheriff's deputy. And here we have at the top of the page, the sheriff is making, you know, is appointing the deputy. And at the bottom, and he signs it, right? And it shows that it's, that it's filed. And he has 30 days to file his oath after he's appointed. If he doesn't file his oath in 30 days, he vacates the office and he's no longer a sheriff, sheriff's deputy. And we'll see at the bottom here, we can read this. You know, I, Bradley M. James, do solemnly swear or affirm, swear or affirm, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the constitutions of the state of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to, to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of California, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. And it has the date that he swore to it, the 2nd of July. And the fact that it was filed on the 8th of July, okay, he's well within the um, appointment time, I suppose. And then in the corner here, you can see that this was a certified copy. I mean, it's not worth getting copies unless they're certified. It was $3.50. So now I have a certified copy of his oath of office. I can make a photocopy of that and write, I accept your oath of office as a binding bilateral contract on it. And we have, a, we have an agreement. Now, the, in, the next interesting thing is, let's look at Title 20, Section 3 of the California Constitution. This is oath of office, and let's read it. Members of the legislature and public officers executive, legislative, and judicial, except such inferior officers and employees, like a janitor, as may by law be exempted, shall, before they enter upon the duties of their respective offices, take and subscribe the following oath or affirmation. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Now, you just heard that oath stated by the deputy sheriff, but guess what? It doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. That's the first paragraph. Then it goes on to say, and I do further swear or affirm that I do not advocate, nor am I a member of any party, or organization, political or otherwise, that now advocates the overthrow of the government of the United States. Gee, I wonder why it doesn't say that. Are you a member of the Communist Party? Are you a member of a corporate, uh, a corporation that has actually made an effort to overthrow the de jure government by force or violence or other unlawful means that within the five years immediately preceding the taking of this oath or affirmation I am not 
been a member of any party or organization, political or otherwise, that would advocate the overthrow of the government of the United States or the state of California by force or violence or other unlawful means except as follows. Hey, if you want to put the Communist Party in here, that's where you put it. And that during such time, I hold, hold the office of, name of office, I will not advocate nor become a member of any party or organization, political or otherwise, that advocates the overthrow of the government of the United States or of the state of California by force or violence or other unlawful means. Quote, this is right out of the state California Constitution. Of course, you know, hey. So we have, and no other oath, declaration, or test shall be required as a qualification for any public office or employment. What does that mean? That means this is the oath. You have to take this oath. You can't shorten it and make it something other than this oath. It's not allowable. Go down to 10, Government Code 1027, where it says, Every person who exercises the duties of an employment in violation of the provisions of the article relative to oaths, and every person who knowingly employs a person ineligible by reason of the provisions of this article relative to oaths, is guilty of a misdemeanor. So guess what? If you don't file this oath, the constitutional oath, within 30 days, you're in violation. Government, thir government Code 1303 says every person who exercises any function of a public office without taking the oath of office or without giving the required bond is guilty of a misdemeanor. Guess what? Every oath I've looked up so far is defective. Government 1770, Government Code 1770, an office becomes vacant on the happening of any of the following events before the expiration of the term, I his or her refusal to, or neglect to file his or her required oath or bond within the time period prescribed. So there you go. Are they in violation? Sure. Can you prove it? Yep. Go down and get the oath of office. Proof. So here's the California Constitution. And here we move to um, art, Article 20, right, oath of office. See at the top, Article 20, Section 3. Okay. You can see that it's the same as what I read. You have the first paragraph, that's the one they take, and then the second paragraph that they leave out, and the no affiliations, no affiliations they leave out. So there you go, in violation. Then we go to the bond. Let's look at the official bond for the county of Sonoma. Here we have the official bond. And right here at the top of the page we see, see where it says CSAC, CSAC, Excess Insurance Authority, CSAC. This is the, this is the bond that they have on file. And then we go to California bonding requirements. So 54 of 58 counties in California have elected to have CSAC issue an insurance policy, insurance policy in lieu of a bond, but it only protects the county against employees and it does not protect the people from being injured by dishonest activity on the part of the state employees, which makes it unconstitutional. A notary's bond specifically states it is there to protect the people from any bad actions on their part, and it is true, and it is a true constitutional bond because, hey, if I go down to the notary, and they do something wrong, I can t go after their bond and their bond will pay me and make me whole again and I'll have a remedy. You might ask why would they, why wouldn't they just do the correct oath because they are not the government and have usurped and overthrown the unlawfully the true republic. Remember the United States Constitution states in Article 1 Section 8 Congress shall quote coin money, regulate the value thereof and of foreign coin and fix the value of standard weights and measures.